Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. of the Lord forever. Yeah. 
unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand. This is the gate of the Lord, into which the righteous shall enter. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. This is from John, the 15th chapter. And Jesus said to his disciples, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. 
But I have said these things to you, that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to thee, O Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord in the courts of the house of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord in the courts of the house of the of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord in the courts of the house of the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. I will pay my vows unto the Lord in the courts of the house of the A reading from Valerius Herberger, translated by Matthew Carver. In the name of the Son of God, our Savior and Heavenly King, Jesus Christ, who by his ascension brought out the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, for all his faithful lovers and witnesses on earth who have been most horribly reviled, despised, and persecuted, and even slain for his gospel, and procured for them a blessed, joyful ascension after they endure the journey of the cross. Most blessed and adored with God, his heavenly Father, and the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. In the world, men are shown numerous ways to heaven, as the Son of God himself laments in Matthew 7. The right and straight way, however, is described for us by the Lord Jesus at the very beginning of our gospel in the words, When the Comforter is come, he shall testify about me, and you also shall testify, etc. That is, the Holy Spirit's proper office is to testify about me. So whoever wants to be sure that he will come to me in heaven must know and believe the Holy Spirit's testimony about my person, office, and benefits. And in keeping with the Holy Spirit's example, testify to and confess my glory publicly. John follows this instruction in his epistle, the first verse, where he says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have touched concerning the word of life, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you. Take note, dear heart, the only mark by which the Holy Spirit may be distinguished from, from all erring spirits is that he points us directly to the Lord Jesus without any distraction. The Lord Christ himself speaks of this in the Gospel for Cantata Sunday with two propositions. One, he will glorify me. Two, he will take of mine. Now the Holy Spirit explicitly testifies to three things about our Lord Jesus. First, concerning his person, that he is true God and man. 
This is why John had to write, by the impulse of the Holy Spirit, this is the true God and eternal life. And the Word became flesh. Indeed, St. Paul had to write, Jesus was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and powerfully demonstrated to be the Son of God according to the Spirit. Second, concerning his office. The Spirit testifies that he is our Christ, prophet, teacher, comforter, king and protector, priest and advocate. This is why St. Paul had to write that Christ Jesus has been made unto us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Third, as regards his benefits. The Spirit testifies that he is our Jesus and Savior and that we get from him forgiveness of sins, hope in the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. This is why St. Paul had to write in 1 Timothy that Jesus is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. Therefore, whoever wishes to remain on the right way and be assured that he will ascend to heaven must simply be content with and abide by the Holy Spirit's testimony about Christ Jesus. Accordingly, he must without hesitation become a personal witness to the glory of the Lord Jesus. And first, he must believe in his heart that Jesus is true God and man in one person, and that he is our mediator, advocate, and redeemer, being very careful to avoid all heresy which contradicts this divine truth. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Second, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Such confession is demanded by the Lord Jesus in Matthew chapter 10 and St. Paul in Romans chapter 10. And third, he must direct all his thoughts, words, gestures, movements, and actions in such a way that all the world can discern from them that the Lord Jesus is who he holds most dear. Therefore, Whoever wishes to be the Lord Jesus' trustworthy, true, and honest witness must first be baptized and thereby testify that he has a desire to be saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. He must, too, listen to the preaching of the gospel with attentive eyes and gestures so that everyone sees that God's word is, in his, he God's word is his heaven on earth. He must, third, humbly seek the absolution at the confessor's chair. He must, fourth, be the frequent guest of the Lord's table. He must, fifth, lead a Christian and godly way of life according to the Lord Jesus' command in Matthew chapter 5. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, not your vice, and glorify your Father in heaven according to St. Paul's words. You were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. May God grant us grace to be honest witnesses of Jesus' glory and be enabled to preserve steadfast to the end. This be granted us by Jesus Christ, blessed forever. Amen. O oh, boundless wisdom, God most high, O oh, maker of the earth and sky, who bids the parted waters flow in heaven above on earth below. The streams on earth are lost in heaven, by the air ordered out to Pour forth the waters of thy grace. Renew. 
renew the fount of life within, and quench the wasting fires of sin. Let his set forth before thee as incense. And the lifting up of my hands as a evening sacrifice. My spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Lord. 